Okay, hi there. Jeff here with another video, a short one on infrastructure, and in particular, how you might uh, use a bit of ADAS analysis to uh, show the possible effects of successful um, infrastructure projects. The Economist magazine calls infrastructure the economic arteries and veins. What a great description. Roads, ports, airports, uh, improved railway lines, power lines, pipes and wires, telecoms and things that enable people, businesses, goods, commodities, water, energy and information to move about efficiently. It's quite interesting. There's been a big focus on infrastructure in the last few years. A lot of countries have actually fast forwarded some of their infrastructure projects uh, to partly to sort of uh, accelerate recovery from the from the pandemic. Although, of course, there's the key shortages of some workers that might can hold back those projects. In the UK, think about some of the major engineering projects that are going on at the moment. Crossrail is just about finished. Thoughts now are turning to Crossrail 2. Uh, flood alleviation schemes. This is the, the multi-million pound scheme to reduce uh, flood alleviation in the city centre of Leeds. London's multi-billion pound super sewer. Trying to replace some of the antiquated Victorian sewers in London, which have clearly reached capacity. Big motorway upgrades, including the A14, A1, Cambridge, Huntington, in the east of England. Uh, companies laying down um, billions worth of pounds of fibre optic cables as we try to inc increase the rollout of, of uh, 5G and other services. And uh, going forward, of course, electric vehicle charging stations. All of this would count as infrastructure, including things like renewable infrastructure, renewable energy. It counts as infrastructure because it's essentially part of the capital stock of a country. Now, you can make a case for saying that infrastructure is powerful because, in theory, it's triple powered. It has an effect on aggregate demand. The projects themselves, people need to be employed in construction, in design, in engineering, uh, in all of those supply businesses, the logistics businesses, the construction sector depends on to make a, a project come to fruition. So infrastructure projects create new demand for goods and services. Yes, some of the imports, some of the uh, inputs might be imported, but there's no, nearly always an injection of demand into the economy from this. Secondly, once the projects are finished, and if they're effective, if they increase the efficiency in the economy, if they improve transport services, if telecoms are a bit quicker, uh, that can actually lower supply costs for firms. Uh, you know, For example, it, it reduces road journey times. It uh, brings down the cost of transporting goods and services. So in theory, infrastructure can actually also shift out short and aggregate supply uh, because of the unit supply costs of firms have gone down. And of course, in theory, if you if you increase the size of your capital stock, then the productive capacity of the economy will also grow. Something that uh, you know countries like China and South Korea have known for many many years. They have very high levels of investment as a share of GDP, so that can shift out long run aggregate supply. So if you think about it, this kind of uh, if you're talking about infrastructure in an exam in a macro paper you've got a great opportunity to build a developed diagram. Let's just quickly do that. I'm using a neoclassical diagram here. So here's an ADS analysis diagram for infrastructure. Initially, we might be in equilibrium at a, uh, GPL1 and Y1. We're saying that infrastructure causes demand to increase. So AD1 might shift to AD2. You can make a case of saying there could be a further multiplier effect, which would shift the AD curve out even further. Infrastructure also shifts out aggregate supply in the short term, because it lowers costs. And it also increases the productive capacity of the economy, depending on the scale of the projects and the industries involved. One would hope that infrastructure uh, increases the productive potential of the economy. So we've got three shifts in the curves. What it does allow the economy to do is to operate at a higher level of equilibrium national income, Y2 in this case, uh, in fact, the general price level might even be a little lower. The main reason that's lower is because I've shifted the, the short and aggregate supply curve out a long way. Uh, but what, what it does show is that infrastructure projects can be non-inflationary in the sense, yes, they add to demand for goods and services, 
which can be inflationary, but they also increase, increase supply potential and reduce supply costs. So this will be a possible ADAS analysis diagram if you're trying to show how infrastructure on the supply side, uh, maybe as a fiscal policy, can act as a stimulus to economic growth. There we go. Hopefully that was useful. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. See you soon.